start recording. Uh, it's called the Hubert. It's called Hubert's limit test. There it is, right there. <coughs> Does have the bonus questions on it, so you're talking about about 12 math questions. 12 math questions and about 12 bonus questions. So everybody should make a what on this test? At least a 50. 100. Everybody should make a, well, everybody should make a 100. I know that, but that ain't going to happen. <coughs> everybody should make at least a 50. So I'm not going to answer the bonus questions. I think y'all can handle those. I'm just going to show you the questions. It's not supposed to jumble them up. There is a limit question, so you got a graphing question. Uh, what does that say? Limit as X approaches 1 from what side? Positive side. Yes. So the left side, you can forget the left side. The left side don't exist. So what is the limit as you, as you approach X from the right side? Three. Three. Good job. Because this line really don't exist, does it? Yeah. It doesn't exist in your world because your world says what? From the right side. So this really don't exist. you got to start learning to think that way. All right, here's one. Determine the limit at infinity. <coughs> now, that one looks complicated, but it's really not, because what 7 over x and 1 over x go to? Say again. I, I don't hear mumble. What? Zero. Zero. So negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4, and 2 minus 0 is 2. Just be careful with the signs. What's the limit? Negative 2. Thank you for the interaction. I appreciate that. I know it's hard for some of y'all. I know it's easier to be a winged on a pickle. So, but, you know, I appreciate it. <coughs> All right, here's one. What, is the, what does the direction say? Find the what? Vertical Set asymptote. the denominator equal to what? Zero. Zero. Now, I put these in as freebies, okay? I figure you might need a couple extra points to get you over 50 or 60, so I put in a couple of vertical asymptotes. If you miss these, you don't tell anybody, right? Just like the bonus questions. You shouldn't set the denominator equal to zero, find the x-intercepts, because that's where they equal zero. I'm not going to do that one, but move on. I'm just showing you this to show you that it's not a, you know, Design the O-rings for the space shuttle. You're not doing that. It's just a review test. If I ever get to another math question. Find the limit. What do you do? This is a simple what limit. Starts with a P. Plug and chug. Plug and chug. So 2 cubed is 8. 8 plus what? 20. 28 minus 7 are 28 minus 14 plus 1 is 15. What do we do here? It says divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power in the denominator. So we're going to divide by x squared. So divide everything through by x squared. That's going to be 7 over x plus 3 over x squared square root of 3 plus 1 over x squared. And then it's supposed to have infinity. I think they're plugging in infinity, aren't they? I don't see infinity. Okay, there it is. Okay, they tried. Here it is. I don't know why they put it in the directions instead of putting it right there. Russia. That's what it is. So what's 7? Let's see. That's, what is that 7? That would be... Uh, I don't know. Three of, that's zero up top, isn't it? Okay, so it's going to be zero. Next. Next. As X approaches zero. Come on now. Please don't miss this one. Negative two. Negative two. See, these limits ain't that hard. What do we do here? Divide through by what? Highest power. Of the denominator, which is? 
squared. X squared. So that's going to give you 11 plus 0 plus 0 is 11 over 13. B A. And 23, 23, 23 is. We went over this one the other day. If you want to find the slope, what's it going to be? F of B minus F of A over B minus what? Mm -hmm. A. So which is that one? Is it that one? No. That D. One. D is in delta. And what do we do here? Find the limit. Is that a plug and chug, or do you have to do anything? Well, rationalize the numerator. Rationalize the numerator. Golly, she paid attention. Wow. Well, rationalize the numerator. I feel faint. So you rationalize the numerator. You're going to get a cluster in the bottom. You're going to get x times square root of 1 plus x times square root of 1 plus uh, 1 minus square root of, I'm sorry, you're going to get square root of square root of 1 plus x plus 1 times x over 1 plus x minus 1, right? So the 1's going to cancel. You're going to get x over a bunch of stuff. But x, when you plug in 0, it should, it might not, you might get does not exist because that 0, let's see, what is it going to do? Square root 1 plus x plus 1. Just give me a second. 1 plus x. That's going to leave x. It's going to leave x in the numerator. And the x is going to cancel, right? And then that leaves you with the square root of 1 plus x plus 1 on the bottom, I think. And when you plug in 0, 1 plus 1, or 1, is it 1 minus 1 plus 1, is 2. It should be b. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah. And what do you do here? Plug and chug, or you got to do algebra? Plug and chug. A lot of people say, well, Hubert, that's an easy test. Well, what did I tell you when we finished algebra review? What did I tell you about the limit, whole section of limit? What did I tell you? It's not crucial to learning calculus. Thank you. It's not. It's not crucial. The biggest thing that you need to realize about, what's the answer to this one? Negative 34? Okay. Uh, the biggest thing that you need to get from this test is, one, do you know the difference between a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, and, and a limit? Yes. Limit means approaches. Okay? Do you know the difference between an algebraic function and a limit function? Yes, an algebraic function, you plug in and you get an answer. A limit function, you are approaching. Okay? So if you know the differences between those two, two or three things there, then you're good for chapter two. So there you are. There it is. Everybody good? Yes, sir. So to answer the question that somebody always asks when I go over the test, when's it due? Well, if you ever want to find out when something's due, you look on what? My Labs Plus. And if you look on My Labs Plus, it's due on the 9th. Now, since the homework was not fixed right, since today, I'm going to give you till the 9th to do all of it, okay? You're welcome. I'm glad you started to interact. It's always nice to interact. Makes the class go by a whole lot faster. Unless you just like being winged on a pickle. A lot of people like being winged on a pickle. Some people are going, what's winged on a pickle mean? Nothing, just forget it. So we'll change that to the ninth also. So where is homework? I've got a story to tell y'all. I had to go to Pendleton today. Well, you know the sun revolves around Pendleton, right? So had to have a meeting. I had to have a meeting. And guess what the meeting consists of? A one-hour PowerPoint presentation, which could have been put they on Skype you. and recorded and Skyped out. 
This is Mayberry Community College. <laughs> Mayberry Community College, exactly. We're in the 1950s. We still have chalkboards. Oh, I'll be all right. What did it say? The ninth? There we go. And save. So everything should be due on the ninth now. So if you got computers, check it to make sure, because that's the coordinator course. That's not y'all's individual courses. I'm going to check it right quick on the coordinator to see if it went through. I'm on the and, site right now, and I can see that it went through. Okay, good. It should all say the ninth. The ninth, 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 ninth. Yeah. Okay, so you're good for this weekend. I know, I'm a bastard. I shouldn't have done that to y'all, but, you know, you'll live. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, let's go to the whiteboard, and let's go to the sketch pad, and let's go into calculus, finally. And, of course, we've already touched a little bit on the calculus, and some of you, you know, have been in calculus before, and that's great with your, what do you call it, pre-calculus and calculus in school and all that good stuff. And some of you have taken calculus before at Tri-County Tech. I'm not going to say if anybody has. I just know in most math classes, you usually have a couple of people that's taking it over, either at another college or whatever. But, and again, let's just leave this white for right now, and I'll bring something in. Now, I went over this a little bit with you when I talked about the limits. And I told you that we have the algebra that you did way back in whenever, and you have a curve, you have that secant line right there, and the secant line is always the interior line. When you get into engineering, especially in civil engineering later, it's going to be called the chord, C-O-R-D, chord of a curve, C-O-R-D. And basically, that chord is going to be a longer distance than the secant because the curve is longer than a straight line. But anyway, I'm going to put the chord right here so some of you might see it later. All right? The secant line, the chord is right there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. The chord is not. The chord is the secant. I don't know why I just... I'm thinking, just, just ignore me. I'm thinking and talking at the same time. All right, so you got that chord, and of course... The secant line doesn't help us. When you get into second semester calculus and third semester calculus, you're going to be studying <coughs> the, the acceleration and the velocity, blah, 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 and the normal vector of a particle in space. Just remember that, a particle in space. And in order to find the normal vector or to find the acceleration vector, which is the first and second derivative of a particle in space, you have to find the tangent vector. And to find the tangent vector, you drop that sucker down. This is x. This is x plus h. This is f of x. And this is f of what? x plus h. And when you drop that sucker down, you, when you make this, Using our limit theory, when you make this approach zero, because this is h, between here and here is the distance h. When h approaches zero, boop, boop, this line comes down here, and, not, and the secant line becomes the what line? The tangent line. And in your second and third semester calculus, along with your dip EQ, you're going to be leaning on that tangent line. Because if you can find the tangent line, you can find the normal vector. Because the normal vector is normal 90 degrees perpendicular from the tangent. And that's just a long story. But anyway, so f of x plus h. Ah, horse punch. f of x plus h. minus f of x over h is basically a 25 cent formula for what? 
the slope. Not, no, not yet. You're getting there. But, and we're still in algebra. It's the, what's the M stand for? Slope. That's the 25 cent algebraic formula for slope. Back in pre-algebra and algebra 1, you did y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's what you did. Now, you take this guy, and we went over this before, and we apply the limit theorem. Limit. As h approaches what? Zero. As this approaches zero, that means that you've got a hairline width between x and x plus h. The width of a hair. Then that means the distance between these two points right here is the width of a hair of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this is what we call the what? The derivative. Now, what is the derivative? Well, we know it's a slope, right? When you take the derivative, derivative is calculus. Okay? That's the easy way to do it in calculus. Up here is algebra plus what? Plus the limit theory. You take algebra plus the limit theory and you will get the same answer as what? The derivative in calculus. Now it's very important for you to understand that because I don't want you to think that algebra is the same as calculus. It's not. I don't want you to think that limits is the same as calculus. But you take the algebra and you take the limit and you mash them together, you have calculus. So let's do an example. Oh, I gotta I gotta I gotta show you so since I don't have posters, you know, at Tri County we we have teachers, innovative teachers as posters. I can't even find a poster board. Anyway, make a long story short. I know y'all are deprived of not having a poster in class, but we're going to do this. And I probably already showed you this. And let's go with the fine derivative. There we go. Have I shown y'all this before? I don't know if I have or not, but. I think so. Okay, well, I'm going to show it to you again. And secant. Let's see, x plus h is right there. Q is way up there. And then, of course, that causes the secant line right there. And then there's the derivative. And basically, it's supposed to be continuous, but if it didn't do continuous, why didn't it do continuous? There we go. I'm supposed to do it over and over. Just one of those days, people. One of those days. There's the tangent. X plus H. Create Q. Put it right there. Secant. There. And that's what basically what's happened. What happens when when you apply the limit theory with algebra? That's what you get. Now, something else that's going on. If you notice, all these values is changing. Well, in calculus, you go from okay in algebra, we know at point five, we know that x is equal to ten. Okay. But with calculus, when you get the equation for the tangent line, you can find any point in space on that line. And it's with it instantaneously. You don't have to calculate each little one. And that's one of the reasons calculus is so important, 
especially when you're talking about programming, when you're talking about finding the length of a curve, finding about finding acreage within a within a size of a lake or a pond where you got nothing but curved edges. That's why programming is so important. I mean, that's why calculus is so important with programming because it's not just one time. Okay, now that's two, so now we got to figure three, three. We got to figure four. That, that, no. It, it does it just like that right there. And the mathematics of the curve is taken into effect with the calculus so that every time it spits out an answer, it's not go back and calculate, go back and calculate. It's there, second by second by second. So that's a little, you know, kind of a visualization of what we're doing. You're supposed to sit here like Chevy Chase on vacation. Let it sink in. Everybody got it sink, sunk in? Okay. You know, I'm not going to say anything anyway. So I'll just go on to something else now. All right, so let's do some examples. Are y'all in a pissy mood today or what? Y'all just don't want to talk to me? Well, that's normal, but y'all just seem like y'all more pissed, by, pissed off more than normal. No, just small children with loud toys. Okay, well, that's that's normal. It's better than junior high. Junior high sucks. I've got one in junior it's high. It's thinking in that my car is broken. What? Okay, how did your car come out? You still, my truck's in the shop. It went in yesterday. It went in Monday. Trade um, my, my car went into the shop, and it's probably not going to be out for like three weeks. Yeah, well, they had to order mine, my part, and I told them to go ahead and order it, so I paid for the part. And then the guy had to, he had a, like a heart surgery thing, catheterization or whatever. So I had to wait another week, and I took it in yesterday. He said it'd be done by Thursday. So today's, what, Wednesday? So, and if you like me, my truck, my vehicle is like my second office. Everything is in my truck, everything. So, okay, I'll shut up. Let's go with f of x. Is equal to x squared plus five. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to do your your difference quotient with f of x is equal to x squared plus five. I'll write the difference quotient down for you again. M is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Just the algebra. We're just going to do the algebra. So, and all of you have been doing this, so you can't say you can't do it because you can. Y'all been doing it? Algebra 2, college algebra. So, and then the review in this, this uh, book. So, all of you can do that. And just for giggles, what do we plug in right here? Job. Oh, shortcut number one. Them dang, them dang shortcuts like Annabelle. Every time you turn around, there she is. Them shortcuts are never going to leave you until you graduate from whatever degree program you're in. Because you're gonna see them in, you're gonna see them in physics, you're gonna see them in calculus, you're gonna see them in statics, you're gonna see them in dynamics, you're gonna see them in thermodynamics, you're gonna see them in hydrology. And I don't know after that because that's when I switched over to education. So. Ow. Boy, I hated, I hated civil engineering. I hated it with passion. Walk into a room, good morning, and they all just look at you like, you're not supposed to talk. God, I hated that. 
That was a wise of Clem Clem's on. <clears throat> That was a major. I'm glad I got out of because I would have been miserable. <clears throat> M is equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 5 minus x squared minus 5 all over h. And let's get our red pen out and let's cancel out what's going to cancel. What's going to cancel? x squared and 5. Make a note. Most of the time, all of your non-H terms are going to cancel. Most of the time. There are going to be a few times where you may have a 6 or an 8 or, you know, you may have another number out there. Depends on how complicated your function is. This is not a complicated function. So most of your terms are going to cancel out. The more complicated your function, the more terms are going to be left. The higher degree your function, the more terms are going to be left. So m is equal to, I'm going to factor out a h, and that's 2x plus h over h. And what happens to the h's? Cancel. They cancel. So at this point, we have the algebraic, the formula the algebraic formula for the slope of this point, or this function. I want everybody to write that down. Go out beside here and put down that you have the algebraic formula for the slope of the line on this no, slope of the tangent line, sorry, slope of the tangent line on the function. So if I take a graph and x plus 5, that's a vertical shift of 5, and I'm just going to put a parabola right here. Everybody with me? So if I put a point right here, then if I drew a tangent line or I drew a secant line or whatever, any line I drew to draw through that point, it's going to have a derivation from this line right here. Okay? So I've just done... All this is algebra. All that's algebra. So now I'm going to take my answer with algebra and I'm going to do limit as h approaches what? Zero. Remember, my h is the distance between my two x's. Everybody with me? So when that h closes down to the width of a hair, your secant line has turned into your what? Tangent line of 2x plus h. So what do you do with that zero? Plug it in. Plug yeah. and chug. Plug and chug. What happens to that h? Goes out. So 2x is the equation of the tangent line at any point on the curve y is equal to x squared plus 5. Now it's very important that you understand what we just found. Now, I'm not talking about those people that descended from, you know, Isaac Newton, okay? I'm not talking about y'all that invented calculus. I'm talking about the people that have either taken calculus a couple of two times, whether it's in high school or college and really sucked at it, or if you took calculus in high school and college and you didn't understand what you were doing, okay? The first two weeks 
we reviewed in algebra. The last week, this last week, we reviewed a little bit in limits. You put the two together, and you get the first area of calculus, which is finding the equation of the tangent line at any point on the curve. So let's check it out and see. Let's take a red dot and put at 2. What's the tangent of that line? I mean, what's the, what's the slope of that line? 2x. Well, you've got to plug the 2 in. What's 2 times 2? It's ne four. negative 2, sorry. Negative right. 2. Negative so four. the slope of this red line is negative 4 over 1. Equation of the slope, sorry, slope of the tangent line, sorry. Okay, let's take the blue dot. Let's put the blue dot at 4. This stupid pen will quit writing all the time. Crazy stuff. All right. What's the slope of that blue line? Eight. Eight over one. What will be, this is conceptual now, you don't have to think. What will be the slope of the line at the vertex of a parabola? Zero over one. Why? Because when Michael Jordan, that's what, when Michael Jordan went up to dunk a basketball, is there one point in space that he's flying? Yes. Take it. Why? Because he's either going up or what? Down. Yeah. So at that point, the slope is zero because technically, at that point, anybody that goes up and does a dunk, anytime you throw a basketball up in the air, a baseball up in the air, a projectile, a spear, whatever, it does a parabolic function. At that point in space, it's either going up or down. So the slope is equal to zero at your highest or your lowest point via the vertex. What is x? x is what? Zero. Zero times two is zero. So the two or three things that you need to see out of this, this one example, is the algebra, the limit theory produces this definition. Now, this is on a, you know, when it gets to a third definition, I mean a third degree and a fourth degree and a fifth degree, we're starting to talk about inflection points and we're talking about increasing and decreasing values. We'll get to that later, okay? Right now we're just working with the parabola. Okay, so if I really wanted to, you know, do 2x, take, pick a point, you know this point is the, you could pick two, you got a negative, so this end is what? It's decreasing. This one is what? Increasing. If you want to find the inflection point, you would say, what is the second derivative? The second derivative would be two, the two would be the inflection point. Of course, it's not drawn right because I don't have it drawn right. But anyway, we'll get into that later. So, now, what about the calculus, Hubert? You said that we were going to do calculus. Well, you just did the calculus through limit and algebra. Now we're going to do it with calculus. So I'm going to erase this board. And now we're just going to do plain old calculus. And this is called the product rule of derivatives. I'm sorry, the power rule of derivatives. And we'll write this down. Power rule of derivatives. And this is your first taste of calculus. And that is, anytime you have a to the n power. You bring that n out. You multiply it by the a, and then you take the n and you minus 1. So let's take, for example, our last question. f of x was x squared plus 5. f of x 
is equal to x squared plus 5. Now, to kill a couple of birds with one stone, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite it like this. Now, this is something, this is a Hubertism. This is something that I do in all my calculus classes for those people that don't walk on water and always have a problem with the different rules. This kind of kills like three, the constant rule, the power rule, and the term and the term rule. It, ter it covers two or three, and I'm just going to show you. There's a one right there, and an x, and a two, plus five x to the zero power. Now, can somebody tell me why I put those in there? Well, not to, I think you're talking about place value. Okay, place value, that you could say place value, but there's a rule in calculus, it's called the constant rule. The constant rule says, and I'm going to show you these rules in just a minute. The constant rule says the derivative of a constant is what? Zero. Now, do you have to remember that rule all the time, or you just have to remember this? You just have to remember this. Because what happens when you do this right, when you bring that n out here, what does that zero do to that five? What does zero multiplied by anything do? Makes it it's going to zero out the term. But I'm going to go ahead and put a negative one right here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. That two will come out here. Two times one and then minus one. So let's go ahead and write our final answer. Two times one is two. X to the one power plus zero x to the negative one power. Well, do you need to write zero times x to the negative one? No, it goes out. Do you need to write x to the first power? No. So what's the answer? What's the derivative of x squared plus five? Two x. And that is what we got with the difference quotient. So that skips the having to set the limit. Uh, exactly. It goes to zero. Okay. That's a good thing that you saw that because if you saw that, that if, if just one person sees that, then that's a good thing. If you don't see it, then that means you're a failure of life. And you probably should quit school. All right, so let's do a narrative. We're gonna we're gonna learn to appreciate the, the power rule of derivatives. Does anybody know why? It gets harder. It gets harder. So let's do one. Let's do one. Let's do one like the old trinomial. F of x is equal to x squared plus four x plus six. All right. I want y'all to do the difference quotient. In fact, just for giggles, let's go ahead and do completing the square and find the vertex and you have the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 6. Go ahead and graph it. And then I want you to do the difference quotient. There's a reason I'm doing this. Not because I want you to... I'm going to do it too, so it's not like I'm doing something that you're not doing or I'm not doing something that you're doing. So... Our y-intercept is equal to 6, 0, 6, and 0, x squared plus 4x plus blank is equal to negative 6 plus blank. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that's x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative what? 2. And our vertex is negative 2 and positive 2. That's our vertex. Take the square root of both sides, and we don't have any x-intercepts, because x plus 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2, which is x plus 2 is equal to i times the square root of 2 minus 2, so uh, that's an imaginary number, which means no x-intercepts. 
So we're going to draw it. And that's going to be 0, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And negative 2, positive 2. Okay, so now we're done with that. Now let's go and <coughs> do f of x and all that good stuff. I mean, uh, quote, uh, difference quotient. Difference quotient, I've got to rewrite this with a big set of parentheses. Put bracket around it. Minus, and then rewrite it, x squared plus 4x plus 6. And then all that over h. And that's going to be x plus h. And that's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 4x plus 6 minus x squared minus 4x minus 6 all over h. The x squared is canceled. The 6 is canceled. The 4x is canceled. And you're left with 2x plus h over h. The h is canceled. And that leaves us with 2x. Limit. As h approaches 0, of 2x plus h is equal to 2x. So what does that tell you about any x squared function? That the, that, the, that the slope of the tangent line on any derivative, I mean on any x squared function will be what? 2x. Now that's going to come in handy when we do the antiderivatives. When we get to the antiderivatives, that's going to be the opposite. So that's why you got to put the plus c. Because if you're finding the derivative, the antiderivative of 2x, the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of 2x plus 5 is x squared. So you've got to you've got a whole family there. So that's why you put the plus c with antiderivatives. Remember that little, one little thing that we just talked about. Anytime you have a x squared plus da 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 da, the derivative of x squared, the, the, the slope of the tangent line will always be 2x. So what if you have 4x squared? Well, 4x squared is going to be 4 times 2 is 8x. So you got to remember to multiply that. Well, we'll get to it when we do the power rule. So as you can see, just by adding one term, just by adding this term, you got a whole lot more what? Algebra. You bump this up to a third or a fourth, you're going to be pulling your hair out. Why? Because in order to do x plus h to the third power, you've got to do x plus h squared plus, I mean, times x plus h. So you've got, if I gave you a third power, if I change this to a third power and change this to a second, you're going to pull your hair out, algebraically. So you learn to appreciate what? The power rule of calculus. Power rule of calculus is going to give us, hold on a second. The power rule of calculus is going to give us 2x, I think I've, did I miss something here? Oh, the 2, 2xh, I believe I'm missing something here. You forget to substitute x plus h for this uh, for x. That's it. Thank you. x plus h goes here. I got a 4x. There should be another h term. 4 plus 4 right here. There we go. All right. So let's take our 1 here. And that's x to the 0. What's that going to happen to this 6? It's going to go out because 0 times 6 is what? 0. What's 1 times 4? Four? 4. x to the 1 minus 1. And 2 times x is 2x to the what? 2 minus 1. And that's 2x to the first power. And then what's 4x to the 0 power plus 4? It's supposed to be 4. My bad. Okay, that's supposed to be 
That's supposed to be 2x plus h plus 4. There we go. Now, that's what I was trying to say. We had f of x is equal to x squared plus 5. That was the first one. And the derivative was 2x. Okay? We got f of x is equal to uh, x to the second plus 4x plus 6x, whatever. And it came out to be 2x plus 4. So when we get to antiderivatives and I throw a 2x in front of you, you don't have any idea of which family it belongs to because 2x is the derivative of both of these. You see what I'm saying? So when we get to the antiderivatives, you're going to have to add a c to it because you don't know what the original function is. Okay, but that's with the antiderivatives, that's later on. Okay? So I'm just trying to get you with these two problems to see you need to appreciate the power rules. So let's do a couple of power rules and let's forget about the algebra. So let's go to a power rule and let's do f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now, there's several ways to write the derivative in calculus. If you have an f of x, the best way to write it is f prime of x. Think of it as an apostrophe. That's called a prime. Now remember, I'm not teaching the people that walk on water. I'm teaching the people that don't necessarily mix with calculus very well. All right? If I'm given this, y is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 3, then I'm going to call this y prime. And there's one more that I don't care nothing about dy over dx, dy dx. Taking the derivative of y in respect to x. Now you're going to see this a lot in dp q. You're going to see it a lot in calc 3. So when you look at the book and you see dy dx, don't, don't, Disregard it because you're going to see it later. Okay? Well, what's the derivative of y and d? Is it like the inverse function or is it the. No, you're taking the derivative of y. This right here, this whole function right here. Okay. That's what it's saying. Okay. In respect to this variable. Later on, there's a fourth dimension x, y, z, and what? Anybody know the fourth dimension? Time. You only got three dimensions. We're not in the fourth dimension. Some of us think we are, but we're not, okay? We're in the third dimension. Everybody in this room has one thing in common. We're in the third dimension. There is no fourth dimension, but there is a fourth variable, which is time. Everything we do has to deal with time. So you have to put that T in there with it. So that's why you've got to get used to saying, because sometimes this is going to be called T, or sometimes this is going to be T. And you have to say, okay, I'm taking the derivative of Y in respect to T. And that's where you get into your differential equations. Okay? So let's go ahead and do this slowly. Because these three terms, you don't have to factor, you don't have to do anything, you do it term by term. Because you can do the power rule with a trinomial, you can break up each term. So, 2 times 3, x to the 2 minus 1. 1 times 4, x to the 1 minus 1. 0 times 3, x to the 0 minus 1. And of course, that last one does what? It goes off. Thus the rule, the derivative of a constant is always what? Because that zero cancels it out. So,
So f of x, f prime of x, or dy dx, or y prime, whatever you want to call it, is equal to 6x squared. I'm sorry, 6x. Can't read my own right. It's easier to do it in your head than it is to write it down. Minus 14x to the 0 power, which is 1, which is 14. So the derivative of this function is 6x minus 14. Can you write out an equation that would be with like a, using the dy dx but with like respect to t? Say what now? Like you said um, that the dy dx was used to like represent the fourth variable. No, 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 I didn't say that. I said in the future, yeah, in yeah. Calc 3 and Diffie Q, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with time because okay. you've got x, y, and z right here. There's your x, y, and z. If you've got a point in space right here, and you've got a vector right there, the point, that point right there, what, does, what do we measure that point going through time, space? We measure it in what? Time. But you have x, y, and z, so you've got to tell what you take it. So in the future, in Calc 2 and Calc 3, this might be dt dx, it may be uh, dy dt, it may be several different things. Okay. But what you, these right here, this, this, and this, all mean the same thing. You're taking the derivative of this y function, of this function, in respect to what? X. That's what that means. Yeah, this is later. Wouldn't it be 6x minus 4? Yeah. Where did I get 14? Oh, 1 times 4. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Like I said, it's a whole lot easier to do this in your head than it is to write it down. Thank you. 1 times 4 is not 14. 1 times 4 is 4. Thank you. Was that Miss Rowland? Yes, sir. Thank you. Miss Rowland keeps me keeps me on the ball. All right, so let's do a narrative. Let's do one and make you quit. How about that? Got to discourage you somehow. We can't give you a positive attitude. F of x is equal to x to the one third power. Oh shoot! I just gave you the dead gum. Dead gum. <laughs> Cube root, shoot, cube root of x to the second power. Now, what did I tell you about radicals and calculus? It's like OIL and water. What does OIL and water not do? They don't mix. They don't mix. So what does radicals and calculus not do? They don't mix. They don't mix. So you got to do what? Starts with R, E, W, R. Rewrite. Rewrite it. Rewrite it as what? A rational power. exponent. Okay, so so if you if you've ever sucked at calculus before, you need to write a note out here. You need to say, rewrite. This is a radical. When you have a radical. When you have a radical, you draw a squiggly line that nobody can understand. Everybody with me? Rewrite as a rational exponent. And I'm getting rid of this one. Oh, this is going crazy. So I'm going to rewrite this exponent. I just put new batteries in these things yesterday. And look at what it's doing. Damn Russians. Darn, that one's not even working. So is it looks like 
I told you it's the Russians. Whenever something don't go your way in life, you blame it on the Russians. Okay, I don't know what this thing's doing. I'll try to write. I don't know. It's, it won't give me the... There. Okay, so F prime, first of all, F of X, I'm going to rewrite it. is equal to, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's never done it this bad. X X to the two-thirds X to the two-thirds, and now what? Now we're going to take the derivative. And i got to erase all this with my fingers, so y'all just have to bear with me. I was supposed to quit, wasn't I? You know, when you can't you can't fix something, you're supposed to quit. So f prime of x. Somebody tell me what I do. Subtract a negative or three over three from two thirds. Well, we got to do. The, you got to bring two thirds out. Two thirds x. So two thirds minus what? Now this is when I get everybody going. Where did three thirds come from? Well, the power rule says that you subtract one, right? What do we have? We don't have a one. We have a fraction. So that means you got to have a common one. So here we go. Two thirds. It's fighting me, y'all. It is really fighting me. I started using my finger and it started not going crazy, so now it's fighting me again. Okay, now it's done quit. Okay, <laughs> two thirds X. Yeah, it's quit. It's saying, okay, you gotta go back to using this. Two thirds <laughs> X. To the negative one third. Hold on one second. <laughs> I don't see if the IT person. I've, I've always wanted to get somebody. Hey, is the IT is 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 what's her name? Yeah, is she down there. No, I just, I don't know her number and I've got something wrong. I believe she Sandra, could you come down here to 137 right quick? Okay, bye-bye. Okay. So, y'all, y'all know what that is. I can't even tell what it is. That's two-thirds X to the negative one-third, right? That's correct. Two thirds x to the negative one third. I'm glad she's going to see this because I've been trying to explain to her what's been happening. Now, when she walks into this room, guess what? It's, it's going to start working. <laughs> I want you to tell me why this thing does this. Look what it's doing. Two thirds. So I've done replace the batteries. And it's doing that. And it's been doing it all day. So I just wanted to show you this doing it. I can't go anywhere. And I could do it with my finger, but then it'll stop. It'll say, okay, he's using his finger. So we gotta and it'll stop. I won't be able to write with my finger. So I wanted to show you this. Two thirds x to the negative one third. Okay, so that x is right there. Now that x is to the negative one-third, right? 
We don't want it to be negative one third. So what do we do with it? And so our final answer is two over three X to the what? One third. Now you see how well that's working? Now you try to write with those and it'll go all over the place. So I don't know. Do you know how to recalibrate it? Yeah, that's probably what I have to do in the morning. Well, tell me why the finger's not doing it. I don't know. And it'll stop. After a while, it'll stop. Yeah, I figured calibration, but if it was calibrated, my finger wouldn't be able to work. So, I don't know. You could check it out maybe in the morning. Yeah, I can check it out. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'll I can... be able to check it in the morning. They have class then, too. I have well, to check it once they're done. That's fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you see how there's like the circle around where the point is of contact? Is that a little circle cursor? I see a circle cursor at the very bottom, down there. You see that? Yeah, I see it down there. I think there might be another one conflicting. Yeah, it may be. Is, is I, it like the mouse? That's what... I don't know. That probably is the mouse. Yeah, now it's done cut my finger off. Yeah. Yeah, it's done cut my finger off now. So I just wanted to show you what it was doing. Okay. So you can maybe fix it. I have no idea what else to do. Just put put it back on that, and I'll see if I can do it with my finger. Yeah, I just cut it off. It's cut, uh, back on now. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's, it's not working now. It's acting like something's wrong with it. Okay, but anyway, you just fix it however you can. Okay. Okay, so that's 2 over x to the 1 third. Now, could you rewrite that? Now, this is where we get into the answers. They may say, write it in terms of radicals. Well, you don't want a radical where? In the numerator, so you'd multiply by the cube root of x squared over the cube root of x squared. You'd rationalize the denominator. And I can't do it right now, but things got junk all over it. Well, it's we need to quit. What time is it? I don't even know what time it is. Huh? What time is class over? Okay, we got four minutes to take the roll, so let me take the roll, and she'll figure out what's wrong with this thing. But I just wanted to get into the first section. I'm not going to put any homework up because y'all got a whole weekend of stuff to do. We're going to continue tomorrow. Now, I may put some homework up after tomorrow, but we're going to continue to work on derivatives tomorrow. So let's go to the handy-dandy. Let me turn off the recorder.